In this video, I'll share how I dollar cost average into the S&P 500 index fund. I'll be demonstrating it on interactive brokers. By the end of this video, you know exactly what buttons to click to finally invest some money into the S&P 500. This video is for beginners and solely for educational and entertainment purposes only. Skip to this time code to show you exactly how I do it on interactive brokers. I'll first be providing some context for beginners. One is dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is a practice of investing a fixed dollar amount on a regular basis regardless of the share price. Personally for me, I'll set aside a fixed amount of budgets that I'll put into the stock market regardless of what happens. Long term wise, it should always be profitable for you if you invest in the right stocks or index funds. Which leads me to the next thing, what are index funds? Long story short, when you buy one share of an index fund, you're buying into a basket of companies. You're not buying into one company, you're buying into a basket of companies. That may be 10 companies, 20 companies. And this moves on to the next topic, which is what is the S&P 500. So investing into the S&P 500 is like buying a basket that includes a curated selection of the biggest and most influential companies in the US stock market. It's a way for investors to gain exposure to a broad cross-section of the market's performance rather than try to pick individual stocks. In life, there's opportunity cost. You can invest your money in property, crypto. Then the biggest benchmark of how we access the success of investment is how much does your money grow every single year. Based on the past 50 years, you have seen an average annualized return of 10.7% over the last 50 years. That means every year, your money will grow approximately by 10.7%. Investing in the S&P is something I recommend for most beginners who aren't planning to learn a lot about finances. This advice is also given by Warren Buffett when asked how how to invest $1 million. And investing in the index fund is what he feels most people should do. The question here is, if you were 30 years old again and had your first million in a bank, how would you invest it? Under the conditions you name, I'll probably have it all in a very low cost index fund. Then I'll forget it and go back to work. Charlie Munger agreed parking the money in a fund tracking the S&P 500 or another stock index was the best option. If you don't have any rational prospects of being a very skilled professional investor, which is most of us, of course you should compromise on some simple things like an index fund, you will not get the advice from anybody because nobody gets paid to give you that advice. You will have all kinds of people telling you how much better they can do than that and how if you give them a fee or give them commissions or whatever it might be. That's also the key point I feel like most people should understand. Most professional fund investors cannot beat the market. Let me share with you a screenshot I got from Adam Koo's webinar. If you don't know who Adam Koo is, I'll recommend you checking out his content. I'm a fan and also take a lot of inspiration from his content as well. The majority of professional investors underperform the market. It means that over a 20-year period, 92% of professional investors cannot even beat the S&P 500, which in layman terms means that they cannot beat this annualized return of 10.7% consistently over 20 years. So if professional fund investors cannot even do that for a lot more complicated reasons, that's probably the reason why Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger will recommend most non-professional investors to just park their money into an index fund. But I'll right now demonstrate it on how you can do it specifically on interactive brokers and show you how I would buy into the S&P 500. First things first, you need a broker and I'll be demonstrating on interactive brokers. If you don't have, I will leave a link in the video description for you to sign up. For this video, I'll use paper money, which is fake money. I'll log in into my paper account, the layout of how you buy it is exactly the same. So type in your username and password. If you're doing this for the first time, I'll always recommend you to use paper money to understand what you're doing. So when you do register for your real account, there'll be a setting of how you can create your paper account. I'll recommend beginners to always start there. Click login. Before you buy any stock, make sure you have transferred money to your brokerage account, okay? So if you don't have any money in your real brokerage account, you can't buy anything. If you need me to make a video on that, please leave it in the video description. Click here and click SPY. What is SPY? I'll recommend you to just click Google, click on index funds ticker. And depending on where you're based at, there are many S&P 500 tickers that you can buy. SPY, VOO, and there's so many that you can buy. Of course, there are some that have certain benefits over the other. For example, if you're based in Singapore, long story short, if you buy into the SPY, you'll get 30% of your dividends taxed or taken away if I'm not wrong. I'll also leave this great article in the video description. Singaporeans investing in the American market are taxed 30% on our dividends as the US does not have a tax treaty with Singapore. For example, if the company declares a dividend that amounts to $100 to you, you will essentially only receive $70. One way to go around this is to invest in Ireland domestic. Ah, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. These Irish ETS benefits from the US Ireland tax treaty rate of 15% of dividends. Okay, so that means instead of being charged 30%, you're only charged 15%. Personally, for me, because I actively trade in the markets, I don't mind getting my dividends taken away for two reasons. One, 
I'm mostly into capital appreciation. So capital appreciation means that the value of the stock will just go up over time. I'm not planning to earn my money from SPY from dividends. And if you don't know how much dividends SPY gives, SPY, just Google it, SPY dividends yield. It's about 1.39%. That means for every $100 you invest into the S&P 500, you'll get about $1.39 every single year. And this to me is like not much money. The second reason why I use SPY is because I'm involved in options trading. So if you guys want to use any other tickers, there are things like VOO. If you want, you can use these tickers over here, VUSA, SPX5, IUSA, CSPX. All these are essentially buying into the same thing as well. Let me go back to actually demonstrating how I'll do it on interactive brokers. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using SPY. Once you're on this website, there are many, many different things. The price of one SPY is $475 right now in USD. Click buy. This thing will then pop up. Make sure you're clicking buy order. I think it automatically selects 100. If you buy one SPY, that is $475. I just want to buy one. Order type, just click market. If you're a beginner, I'm sure you don't have live trading prices. So I think market order is fine. For additional details, for anything on the stock market that you're buying, there is always an ask price and bid price. Think of it as you going to a fish market to buy fish. I'm only willing to pay $1.50 for a fish. The fishmonger is only willing to sell me one fish at $1.60. And that's the price difference between a bid and ask. There will always be a little bit of difference when it comes to someone buying and selling a particular stock. But for beginners, order type, just click market for now. Uh, click preview and you'll see exactly how much you're spending. Amount, one SPY share. Order type market, time in force day, commission $1 and you'll be paying a total of $476.65 USD. Next, click submit buy order. You'll then see this thing. Your order is pending. The US stock market is only available, I think, from 9 a.m. Eastern time onwards, okay? Depending on where you are in the world, your order might be pending if you are trading after official market hours. I actually highly recommend you to trade during market hours, which is during 9 a.m. Eastern time onwards. In this case, you usually click on trade here, click on order and trade, you can see the status of your trade which is pre-submitted. If you are trading during market hours and if you are trading it based on a market order, it will usually be filled immediately. When I say filled, it means that you will actually buy the S&P immediately. That is something that I recommend. A small little thing that maybe doesn't really make a difference for beginners because what is a long-term goal for investing into the S&P 500? You want your money to grow about 10% for the next 50 years or so. I'll now use this compound interest calculator to estimate how much you earn by the end of 30 or 40 years. Okay. Let's assume you're setting aside 500 USD per month to invest into the S&P 500 and if you multiply that by 12, that will be 6,000 USD. A current principle, let's assume that I'm starting from zero. I have no investments. Annual addition, would be 6,000 USD. Years to grow, when you invest into the S&P 500, it is highly recommended that you stick to it for at least 20 to 30, to, if not even 40 years. Right now, I'm going to put maybe 30 years. Interest rate, let's assume that it will grow for 10.7 over the next 30 years. So I'm going to put 10.74%. Compound interest, one time annually and calculate. If you do this over the next 30 years, and if you're assuming you put in $6,000 every year into the S&P 500, at the end of 30 years, you will have a future value of $1.2 million. Okay, so compound interest will really help you grow your money exponentially long-term. But the key point of investing into the S&P 500 is to always ensure you're putting money in regardless the price of the S&P. There are certain years in the S&P where you'll lose money. I'm just taking a screenshot from one of his webinars. This is an analysis of the US stock market over 95 years. Out of 95 years, if you're invested into the S&P 500, you will always earn money. There are some years where you earn a lot of money like 1954 or 1933. There are some years where you actually lose a lot of money. If you invested into the S&P 500 in 2022, from a valuation standpoint, that year, you would have lost about 10 to 20% of your money. But does it really matter? <laughs> And that's where the most important lesson is. You should stick to the path of always investing into the S&P 500. Over the long term, the S&P 500 will always go up. This, of course, lies on the assumption that US will be a superpower and that most of the world's innovation will always come from there. The last thing you want to do is to sell your investments in the years where it performs badly. You want to stick to your investments and wait for the long run because over the long run, you'll always be earning money. So credits to Adam Koo for sharing this analysis. The next question is, do you need to buy into the S&P 500 every single month and personally 
I actually don't. I wait until there is a slight retracement in the price of the S&P 500 before I buy it. This is done through a concept using support and resistance. For beginners, don't be intimidated when you see charts like this. It's actually a very simple concept. Go to tradingview.com. They have a free plugin and just draw some lines at which the price mostly congregates at. I'll usually click on a monthly time frame to see key support resistance. I think this is the support resistance here. And the next thing I'll do is draw trend lines. Make sure it touches this candlestick over here. Don't worry too much about the complicated candlesticks. Just draw the lines. And after you draw the lines, you should be able to see some patterns of sorts. The stock market always goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So when it goes up here, there's a likelihood of it usually going down over here, maybe somewhere here or even down to this line over here. Is it 100% guaranteed it will drop? No one knows, but this is just us trying to predict as much as possible when is a good time to buy. It is usually never a good time to buy at a high level. Personally for me, when I dollar cost average into S&P 500, I'll wait for the price of it to drop maybe to somewhere over here before buying it. I don't want to buy it at the high levels. I only want to buy it at the low level. So these are some levels levels that I've drawn. It doesn't take a genius to draw these trend lines, but I usually buy it nearer towards the bottom than the top. So anytime when it goes to the bottom over here, then I'll buy. If it goes up, then it's usually I won't buy it. When it goes down, I'll then buy it. How often does the down happen? In my experience, maybe once in every three or four months. For me, I usually buy into the S&P 500 every three or four months. I'll just draw some simple lines that indicates where it might be a good place for me to buy. The question is, how much do you want to buy? If let's say you have decided to put in 6,000 per year, I'll, I'll take this 6,000 divided by three and it gives me $2,000. If I'm dedicating $6,000 a year to invest into the S&P 500, I'll probably invest a total amount of $2,000 when the price of SPY is nearer towards here. So maybe I'll buy three to four SPYs. So click stock, click buy. If I'm buying four, click four here, click limit, click market for complete beginners, click on preview, see how much money you're going to fork out. The fees is only $1 over here and click submit buy order. Okay, a recap. If you are trading during market hours when the market is open, you should see a status which is filled here. After that, you can click on portfolio. Then you'll be able to see that you own SPY. And if you do this consistently over a long enough time, you should be able to achieve this future value if you stick to it, okay? That's all for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll reply them and I'll see you in the next one.